Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm making a follow-up video to the last video I made, which was about booting up an M4 Mac Mini off an external drive in the thought that you might save some money on Apple tax on the internal drive. But when you do that, Apple intelligence is not available. You have to boot off the internal drive to use Apple intelligence. Okay. So we got past that. That's all that video was supposed to be about. But people came in with the comments, why would you want to boot external? Or, dude, you can boot off the internal drive. You can just keep your data on an external drive. Duh. I never thought of that, to be honest. But okay, I definitely deserve some of that lash back. I have like 100 terabytes in my closet over there. I have my photos app libraries on external drives. I have my music library on external drives. I have my Steam games on external drives. All my mixes on external drives. But one commenter made a very positive comment and he said, why don't you just move your home folder to the external drive and not the system? And I was like, you know, I I've never really thought of doing that before and I wasn't quite sure how to do it, but I looked it up and I'm going to show you how to do it because there was a great guide on the Apple Insider website written by Chip Loader. And I'll leave a link to that in the description as well if you prefer a written guide. It's really easy to do. Now, of course, your external hard drive always has to be connected to your Mac. You know, that's the only downside that I can see. And of course, you need a really quality enclosure like the Zyke drive that I'm using. Link in the description and you want a bus power drive you do not want one with a power switch that you have to turn the thing on every time you boot your mac because you might forget to turn it on and that could cause problems the bus power drive will always turn on when you boot your mac and i recommend a 40 gigabit thunderbolt or usb 4 drive i'm doing this with the m1 mac studio that i've been testing out and it's easier to do when you just get the computer of course when you've got lots of data then it's going to take some more work. But with this brand new M1 Mac Studio, I moved the home folder to the Zyk Drive USB 4 enclosure with a Team Group 2 terabyte NVMe. And just a quick heads up, iPower Resale is blowing out brand new unopened M1 Studios for extremely good prices. With a full Apple one year warranty and the ability to get Apple Care for another two years if you want. So this might be a very viable option as opposed to one of those new M4 Mac Minis depending on your personal workflow. But if you are thinking about buying that base model 256 gig M4 Mac Mini, this is a great way to expand your storage. And I'm using a Mac Studio to do this with, but you can do exactly the same thing with the new Mac Mini. So you're way better off buying more memory, more RAM, then you are paying the additional Apple tax to get more storage. And this really applies to any desktop Mac. Look at what they charge for two terabytes, a criminal $800. So buy as much memory as you can afford because you can't add more later. And don't buy Apple's internal storage upgrades. Just go with the base storage. And you can have 95% of your internal storage now on an external drive. So let's get to it. I'm going to show you how to move your home folder to the external drive. So I'm making this video in two parts. Part one is moving the home folder on a new Mac that you have not even booted into for the first time. And then part two will be moving your home folder on a Mac that you've already been using. Maybe it's pretty new or maybe you've been using it for two years. And you want to move your home folder to that external drive to free up the internal space on your Mac. So in this video, we're just doing part one, installing the home folder on a brand new Mac. And subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get a notification when I upload part two. Okay, you got the brand new Mac, you plug it in, you hit the power button, you're booting up for the first time, and you have to go through all the prompts. And there's two things you don't want to set up when you're first booting up into your new Mac. Do not log into iCloud. Apple will ask you to, they will push you to, and you just have to skip that process. Because if you do that, all your iCloud data is going to start populating on the internal drive. Secondly, do not migrate your data from your other computer because the same thing will happen. All your data will get copied from the computer you're migrating from to your new internal drive eating up space. Once the new home folder is set up on the external drive, you can then log 
into iCloud and also migrate your data from your other computer if you want. So now that you're logged into your brand new Mac, you need to connect your external hard drive. And to make our lives easier, we want to be able to see these hard drives, our internal hard drive and our external hard drive on the desktop. So go up to Finder Settings and turn on those options because Apple has them turned off when you first boot up your Mac. Then we're gonna to go to our applications folder and we're gonna to go to utilities and we're gonna launch disk utility to format our new external hard drive and use one of the Thunderbolt ports in the back. If it's a brand new hard drive, you're gonna to have to go in and reformat it because most drives come unformatted or they come formatted in XFAT. So we need to format it in APFS, which will completely erase the drive. If it came unformatted, then Apple will tell you, hey, you've attached an unformatted drive. Do you want to initialize it? And you can say, yes, format it, but I prefer doing it with disk utility. And whenever you format a new hard drive, Apple asks you if you want to use it for time machine, a message will pop up on your screen. Just say no. So we're going to launch disk utility, select the drive and format it in APFS GUID partition. And this is just an example, but I call called mine external home. You can call yours whatever you want. Now we're finally going to get to move that home folder. And I know this has been kind of lengthy, but it's going to be worth it. So now we're going to open up both hard drives, the internal and the external. So we're going to go to users and there's my user account with my home folder. Okay. And there's all the stuff in my home folder. Now we're going to open up our external drive. And we'll move it over here a little bit so we can see both. And you can't just copy your home folder over. You have to create a new folder and give it a different name. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as your home folder. I'm going to call it Lance McVicker X, as in external. And then we're going to copy over all the things in our home folder to the new home folder. So we're going to open up the home folders on both drives and we're gonna drag over all of our information from the internal home folder to the new external home folder. And as you can see, I have 32 gigs of data in my internal folder. That's because I did a bunch of screen captures. Otherwise, these folders would copy almost instantly because they'd be empty. So we'll just speed that up. And now all our folders are copied to the external home folder. And everything we have on the internal folder is still there. And you can see that the internal home folder, the icons for the folders have the little music symbol, the movie symbol, etc. Whereas the ones on the external drive don't have those yet. So now we're going to go to system preferences and tell the Mac where to look for our new external home folder. So we're going to scroll down to users and groups and click on that. Then we're going to hold down the control key on the keyboard and click on my administrative account name and you'll see this little window pops up advanced options. You got to love how Apple hides this. So click on advanced options and type in your administrative password. And then we're into the advanced options. And the only thing you want to mess with here is the home directory. Click on choose and then go find your external hard drive and select on the folder you created. You can see all our stuff in there. You want to select on the folder, Lance McVicker X in my case, click open. And you can see our home directory location is now changed to the folder we created on the external drive and hit OK. This message pops up to use the folder you specified as your home folder. You must restart your computer. So we click OK and we reboot the computer. And now that we're rebooted, we have to go through and kind of do all the initial stuff that you do when you first buy a new Mac. You know, you've already done it when you first created your user account, but we moved the home folder. So you sort of have to do some of this stuff again. OK, so we're finally logged back in and we're using our external home folder now. You can see the little icons on the folders have those symbols and the internal ones no longer do. And this is Apple's way of showing you that you are now using your external home folder. Now we got to talk about applications. Okay, there's one more folder we're going to copy over to our external home 
folder, and that is the Applications folder. As you know, the more applications you download, the more you fill up your internal space. So we're gonna grab the Applications folder, and we're gonna put that inside our home directory on our external drive. So we're just gonna grab Applications, drag it over, and currently, all this has in it are the Apple applications. And you go to open it and you say, hey, where are those Apple applications? They stay on the internal drive. They are not copyable. So all you're gonna be using your external applications folder for is everything but the Apple built-in system apps. Apple's apps literally only take up about a gig and a half of your internal space. But all your other apps, like games, etc., take up a huge amount of space, 40 gigs for one game, right? So you can keep those in your external applications folder. So as an example, I'm just going to download Amazon Prime Video because it's a small app. It's going to go to the internal applications folder, and then I'm going to move it to the external applications folder and delete it from the applications folder. Now, things like games on Steam, they're going to download to your new user account automatically. You're not going to have to do that. And other applications, like if you install Pro Tools or whatever apps you use, you might have to move them from the internal applications folder to the external. But you know, once your apps are in place, you're not going to be moving them around much. So it's not a big deal. And it will save you a bunch of internal space. So there's Amazon Prime, it's copied over, so I can now delete it from the internal applications folder. And you wanna do this with all your apps going forward. Just remember, now that you created the new home folder, everything is gonna go there from now on, except for your applications. And here's a quick example. So on the right is my external applications folder, which I have installed a lot of applications. And on the left, that's the Apple Applications folder. It's only taking up 1.12 gigs of our internal drive. And if you want to, you can create aliases to all of Apple's apps and have them all be in your new Applications folder. You see on the right, all of Apple's apps have a little arrow in the lower left-hand corner of the icon, and those are aliases. So I can launch Apple's applications right from the external applications folder or from the dock. Okay, so to sum it up, the whole point of this is to have our data stored on an external drive, not have it eating up the internal storage of our Mac. And therefore, we don't have to go buy an expensive, overpriced internal drive for our Mac. We can buy the cheaper tier or the next tier up. You're much better off spending the money on the RAM. The more RAM, the better. So whatever you can afford, spend the money on RAM, not on internal storage, and then do what we we did today and use an external home folder, all your stuff is going to go there. Your iCloud data, your photos, your music, your movies, and your applications can be installed on the external drive or they can be moved from the internal to the external. Just the Apple system applications are going to be on the internal applications folder. So yes, you got two application folders to deal with, but it's not a big deal. And then when you go back up your drive, it's a drag and drop scenario. You just take that home folder, drag it to another drive externally, and you're backing up everything that you've got, all located in one tidy place. Okay, so it's always good to have a backup, right? So now that we've got our whole external home folder set up, we're going to add an extra user so that if for some reason our external home folder goes down, we can still log into our Mac. So we're going to click Add User. We have to put in our current administrative password. And very importantly, we want the new user to also be an administrator. So the new added user also has the power to make changes on the computer. And I'm just going to call the new user Lance Internal. And we click on account name, and then we put in our user password. Whatever we want to use, I just use the same one. And then we hit create user. So again, make sure it's an administrator. And this is just for backup purposes. For some reason, if our home folder were to go down, the drive won't mount or whatever, you'll still be able to get into your computer and make changes. 
go repair the hard drive if you need to, etc. So it's just a good backup to have a user that you can log into on the computer itself. And you can see the home directory is located on the internal drive instead of only having one user that has an external home folder. It's just a good backup plan. So you can always log into the internal account if there is a problem with your external situation or you forgot to plug in the hard drive. So stay tuned. I'll be posting part two of this video soon and it will have the information you need to know about getting all your data from your internal drive to the new home folder externally. OK, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.